Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum and hi. So hari ni saya akan bincangkan uh, soalan bio booster chapter 5 cellular respiration and fermentation. So basically this chapter carry the highest mark in SPM which is around 15 marks. Okay, quite high lah. 15 markah. So dalam uh, video ni saya akan bincangkan soalan bio booster yang terdiri pada two structure question and we have two essay. Okay, to structure and to essay. Okay, so we just continue with our first uh, questions. Okay, figure one shows the process involved during aerobic respirations of liver cells. Okay, so as we know, liver cell is an active cell. Okay, so yang ni awak kena take note, an active cell. Okay, so we have these one of the stages where you see this kind of uh, cycle is actually for aerobic respiration. So cycle is satilah, which is crab cycle. Okay, so first question: name A, substrate B, and process X. Okay, so A. So we have A here from pyruvate undergo something, and then we got A, and then A enter crab cycle. So A is actually as a real co. Okay, so make sure you put dash as well. Huh? Okay, so acetyl CoA. Okay, next ialah substrate B. Okay, substrate B from fumarate to substrate B and then substrate B to oxaloacetate. So fumarate undergo hydration. Okay, so for me, so this is what we call as uh, malik lah. Macam ni. Okay, so jawapan dia ialah malik. Okay, next is the process X. So, process X saya dah sebut tadi. So, kalau cycle dalam aerobic respiration, satu saja iaitu crab cycle. Okay, so crab, make sure you write down K rope besar. Eh. So, dia ialah crab cycle. Okay, next. Based on figure 1, which step involve oxidative decarboxylation? Briefly explain the steps. Okay, so first awak tengok kat sini ada tiga markah kat sini. Okay, kalau awak pasang kat sini, dia start dengan link reaction. And then we have, actually we have three steps here that involve in oxidative decarboxylation. So involving this and these two steps. Okay, so here three marks and dia suruh explain briefly the steps. Okay, so basically apa yang awak boleh buat ialah awak mention salah uh, salah dua. So maksudnya dua, two of the steps. You mention from what to what, okay, and then I will explain apa itu oxidative decarboxylation. Okay, so apa awak dapat kat sini? Okay, so kita ada from isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate, one of it, and then from alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl CoA. Okay, so salah satu, uh, dua lah, okay, and then barulah awak explain. Okay, so what is oxidative decarboxylation? So substrate release carbon dioxide which is the carbon section and oxidize to reduce NAD plus to NADH. Okay, so they undergo the carbon section and oxidation. Okay, lagi satu step saya tak mention kat sini ya. Okay, so awak boleh juga cakap step from pyruvate to A ataupun acetyl co so yang tu pun boleh juga jawapan dia. Okay, so awak dapat tiga markah kat mana? So yang ni satu, yang ni satu, okay, yang ni satu. Ataupun yang ni salah satulah you mention any two of the uh, step. Okay, any two of the step. Okay, how to mention it? Jangan mention step satu ke dua ke tiga. Kena mention dari substrate apa ke substrate apa. Tu cara nak jawab dia. Okay. So next ialah, okay so ada next. Name organelle and state the locations of the process. Okay, so organelle. So organelle involved in la mito, con, re, yeah. Okay, locations of the process in la matrix of mito, con, re, yeah. Yeah, matrix. Kena mention lah, matrix of mitochondria. Sebab dia bila location of the process memang kena specific lah. Okay, katakanlah dalam soalan dia tak minta pun organelle. Dia suruh where uh, does this process occur. So make sure you mention matrix of mitochondria. 
tak boleh matrix saja, tak boleh mitochondria saja. Kita cakap yang spesifik. Okay. Okay, next. How many ATP is produced from process X? If 36 molecules of glucose are consumed. Okay, so from one molecule of glucose, okay, one glucose, from process X, awak akan dapat dua ATP. Okay, dua ATP kat mana? Kat sini eh. So, this is where you got the ATP. Okay, so kalau satu glukos dapat dua ATP, so kalau 36 glukos, darab dua lah kan? So, darab dua. So, awak dapat 72 or 72 ATP. Okay, so you don't have to show the calculation because it's only one mark here. So, you just mention the, the amount of ATP produced. Okay, the amount of ATP produced. So, cakap je lah ada 72 ATP. Kat sini, saya just nak tunjuk macam mana boleh dapat 72 ATP tu. Okay, which is 36 glucose time 2. So, one glucose, you got 2 ATP in Krebs cycles. We got only got 2 ATP in uh, Krebs cycles. And the process where ATP is produced, ingat lah, nama dia ialah substrate level. Phosphorylation. Kalau dia minta lah. Okay. So kalau dia minta, saya ingat. Proses di mana ATP terhasil kat dalam Krebs cycle dan glycolysis ialah substrate level phosphorylation. Okay. Next. What happen to NADH in glycolysis is supply of oxygen is scarce in a muscle cell. So maksudnya kalau oksigen tak ada. Okay. Ni maksudnya tiada. Okay. Tiada. Ataupun sikit dekat dalam muscle cell, apa akan berlaku pada NADH? Okay, sebab dia mention kat sini muscle cell. Okay, so awak kena tahu dia, dia boleh undergo apa. So basically dia akan reducekan something lah. Kita tahu NADH ni fungsi ni ialah act as reducing agent. And kalau tak ada oksigen, berlaku fermentation. So bila berlaku fermentation, sama ada lactic acid fermentation ataupun alcohol fermentation. Sebab dia mention kat sini muscle cell, So, muscle cell lactic acid fermentation lah. So, kalau lactic acid fermentation, okay, apa yang berlaku ialah Okay, so NADH akan reduce. Okay, NADH will be oxidized to form NAD plus ataupun NADH will reduce pyruvate into lactic acid. Okay, so one mark only. Okay, so, sama ada yang ni ataupun yang ni. Kalau uh, the best is this one lah actually. So you just mention NADH will reduce pyruvate into lactic acid sebab dia specifically cakap tanya pasal masa cell. Okay so that is question number one. Okay so next question for question number two. Here figure two shows the alcohol fermentation process that occur in yeast. Okay so dia dah mention dekat dalam yeast and dia mention belah huku alcohol fermentation. So, awak tahulah alcohol fermentation apa yang berlaku. So, dia ada diagram kat sini. Okay, so, we have glucose undergo glycolysis forming pyruvate. So, this is glycolysis. Okay, kat sini dia tunjuk 2 ATP ya. Sebab dia mention yang net 2 ATP produce in glycolysis. Okay, and then pyruvate undergo something produce X and then dia hasilkan Y and then Y undergo something hasilkan etanol which here Reducing agent is used. So maksudnya this is a process of reduction. Okay, so first question. Name X and Y. Okay, so X and Y from pyruvate to Y, Y jadi ethanol. So awak kena tahulah. So Y ialah ethanol ataupun acetaldehyde. So this is decarboxylation. Okay, so X ialah CO2 ataupun carbon dioxide. Okay, kalau awak letak CO2 saja pun betul. Okay, CO2 saja pun betul. Okay, what is Y? Okay, Y ialah acetaldehyde ataupun ethanol. Okay, ethanol. Okay, and then ethanol jadi ethanol. So, they reduce. Okay, name the process that convert pyruvate to Y. So, convert pyruvate to Y. So, CO2 keluar. So, maksudnya ialah Decarboxylation. Okay, ingat ah. Decarbox. D ni maksudnya dihilang. So kalau dehydration, hilang water kan. So ni decarboxylation maksudnya hilang carbon dioxide. Okay, what is the functions of NADH in alcohol fermentation? 
Nutrition is a profusi NADH in alcohol fermentation. Functions of NADH in alcohol fermentation ialah Okay, what? To reduce Okay Ethanol Or acetaldehyde To ethanol Okay, specific lah. Okay, be very specific because it mentioned alcohol fermentation kan. So, alcohol fermentation kita tahu lah dia reduce kan apa. Tu pun orang nak cakap it act, act as reducing agent. Okay, tapi specific. Kita cakap yang specific. The best answer is you you mention the specific one. Okay, you mention the specific one. Okay, so that is the question. Okay, next question. Uh, state two differences between Arabic and Fermentation. Okay, two differences only in Arabic and fermentation. Okay, so kat sini saya nak tekankan kalau dia minta differences, kalau dalam soalan tu dia tak bagi table kosong, jangan bagi table. So, awak kena buat ayat penuh. Okay, tapi kat sini saya tunjuk jawapan dia dalam bentuk table sebab ada banyak jawapan. So, saya akan ajar lah macam mana nak buat ayat untuk kalau kita dia minta differences. Okay, so first, Arabic respiration. Okay, and then fermentation here. Okay, so requirements of oxygen in the aerobic respiration ataupun involvement of oxygen. Okay, so aerobic respiration require oxygen. So, kita tambah kat tengah while or but or whereas pun boleh juga. Okay, but. Okay, or whereas pun boleh juga. Fermentation do not require oxygen. Okay, so that is one of the difference. Okay, and then another difference here is about where it occurs. Okay, so here, aerobic respiration occur in cytoplasm and mitochondria. So, you need to mention both while fermentation occur in cytoplasm or cytosol only. Okay, next, involvement of the process. So, process that involve ialah glycolysis, Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation in aerobic respiration while glycolysis only in fermentation. Okay, and then this one definition here, aerobic respiration is a complete breakdown or oxidation of glucose molecule while fermentation is a complete breakdown or oxidation of glucose molecule. Okay, and then oxidizing agent yang involved so dalam aerobic respiration sebab ada Krebs cycle so ada FADH2 yang terhasilkan so dia punya oxidizing agent ialah NAD plus and FAD while for fermentation NAD plus only. Okay, last sekali ialah, bukan last, um, difference lain ialah in term of final electron Receptor. So, aerobic respiration, final electron receptor is oxygen while in fermentation, final electron receptor is pyruvate. In lactic acid, fermentation and acetaldehyde or ethanol in alcoholic fermentation. Okay, so ni kena mention dua-dua. Kena mention dua-dua sebab ada dua fermentation kan. Okay, and then next ialah end product for aerobic respiration are so water and carbon dioxide and fermentation. Also, you need to mention untuk alcoholic fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. Okay, kena mention dua-dua. Okay, next ialah in term of glucose terhasil, uh, sorry, uh, three, uh, how many ATP produce per glucose? So, this one 38 ATP per glucose and this one only net 2 ATP per glucose because it produce the ATP in the glycolysis where you got only net 2 ATP per glucose. Okay, so that is difference between aerobic respiration and fermentation. Okay, next. Okay, state two differences between alcohol fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. So, this one, alcohol fermentation and lactic acid fermentation pula. Okay, so macam biasa, jangan buat table kalau dia tak bagi table. Okay, so jawapan dia. Okay, so in alcohol fermentation, produce carbon dioxide while lactic acid fermentation does not produce carbon dioxide. Okay, ataupun persamaan uh, jawapan yang sama dia boleh letak pada point yang sama ialah kalau tak mention carbon dioxide terhasil boleh mention decarboxylation occur or not. So in alcohol fermentation decarboxylation occur or in lactic acid fermentation does not uh, no decarboxylation occur. Okay, next ialah in term of final electron receptor. Okay, so in alcoholic fermentation, acetaldehyde or ethanol act as the final electron receptor while in lactic acid fermentation, 
pyruvate as the final electron receptor. Okay, last one is the product produced. So, untuk product, kena mention dua-dua for, for alcoholic fermentation, ethanol and carbon dioxide. So, N ni digariskan eh. So, maksudnya kena mention dua-dua baru dapat marka. And for lactic acid fermentation, only lactic acid is produced. Okay, so that is the difference between alcohol fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. Okay, so I learn seterusnya. State two applications of fermentation in industry. So here, dia tak spesifikkan nak alcoholic fermentation ke lactic acid fermentation. So dia nak fermentation saja. So awak boleh bagi mana-mana lah. Okay, so two applications. So example, bukan example. So bakery to make dough right in the making of bread. Okay, so mention, uh, explain sikit. Okay, lagi ialah for brewery ataupun to make wine and beer. Okay, and then for dairy industry to make cheese and yogurt. And last kali to make local food such as tapai, tempe, ubi or cincalok. Okay. okay, so that is the applications of fermentation. Kalau dia nak spesifikkan, dia minta alcohol fermentation. So, yang mana yang alcohol fermentation? So, alcohol fermentation, kita ada this one, alcohol fermentation. And this one, also alcohol fermentation. And this one, lactic acid fermentation. Okay, fermentation lah. Okay, and then untuk yang this one, kena spesifik lah. Kalau nak bagi yang ni, bagi example yang sepatutnya. So, kalau tapai dengan tempe, So this one ialah alcohol. Sebab dia involve plant kan. For this one dia involve uh, lactic acid. Okay. Okay so that is the answer. Kalau dia spesifik lah. Kalau dia tak minta spesifik. Kita bagi dia mana-mana. Tak ada masalah. Okay tak ada masalah. And kat sini minta tu macam biasa. Kalau dia minta tu kita bagi tu. Tapi ni sebab kita nak bincang. So kita orang bagi lebih lah. So bagi lebih uh, uh, untuk pilihan jawapan yang boleh diterima. Okay. So that is question, uh, second question for structure question. Okay, next kita tengok pula uh, for uh, essay question. So we have two essay question we will discuss. Okay, so first question, describe how one molecule, okay, so one molecule of glucose is able to produce 38 ATP via aerobic respiration. Okay, so 38 ATP maksudnya active. Uh, okay, kena cerita semua ke? Okay, tak perlu. Kita, apa yang kita perlu cerita kat sini, tak perlu cerita glycolysis, sorry, step 1 sampai step 10. And then, step circle, semua step. You don't need to mention that. Okay, so kalau nak cerita tu, ambil masa panjang lah kat sini, 14 masalah je kan? So, apa yang kita kena cerita kat sini ialah proses apa ATP terhasil. Okay, so first, I want mention substrate level. Phosphorylation. Okay, ni kita buat dia punya ni dulu. Uh, rangka je dulu. Okay, kedua ialah oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, so these are the two process where ATP are produced in the uh, aerobic respiration. So, we have substrate level phosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylation. So, substrate level phosphorylation ni dah hasil kat mana? So, kita ada glycolysis dengan Crab cycle. Okay, so glycolysis kita dapat berapa? Okay, kita dapat 4 ATP kan? Tapi net 2 only. Okay, macam mana nak cerita? So, awak kena mention lah dekat step mana. Step mana tu jangan step 7, 10. Kena mention lah step from uh, phosphorinopyruvate to pyruvate. And then from um, Uh, lagi satu ialah from 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate to 3 phosphoglycerate. So you mentioned, so there you got 4 ATP and then you use 2 ATP, so net 2 ATP produce crab cycle daripada SS. So sinil CoA to sub sinil. Okay, so you got 2 ATP there. Okay, and then dalam oxidative phosphorylation, awak kena mention lah sebab dalam ni berlaku melibatkan ETC dengan chemi osmosis kan. Okay, tak payah cerita in detail sangat. Awak cakap je dia lalu ETC tu and then energy release. Okay, and then uh, akan produce ATP by chemical osmosis tu. Okay, okay. And then yang ni kena mention lah. So, NADH dapat daripada glycolysis berapa. So, total NADH. So, awak dapat satu NADH, awak akan dapat uh, 3 ATP. Okay, and then satu FADH tu 
which is the reducing agent, dia dapat 2 ATP. Okay, so tengok jawapan dia macam mana. Okay, so here is the answer. Okay, so first, they mention dulu, okay, dia punya intro, mention dulu, aerobic respiration, apa dia? So, aerobic respiration, refer to complete breakdown, ataupun oxidation boleh diterima juga. Okay, of glucose to form ATP in the presence of oxygen. So, ada dua cara, which is, substrate level phosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, so ni dia mention dulu substrate level phosphorylation. Okay, substrate level phosphorylation uh, refer to productions of ATP from the phosphorylations of ADP where phosphate group added come from the substrate. Okay, so yang ni dia cerita apa itu substrate level phosphorylation. So basically substrate level phosphorylation ialah di mana uh, substrate transfer dia punya phosphate group pergi ke ADP untuk ADP tukar jadi ATP. Okay, so sebab tu dia panggil substrate level phosphorylation. Okay, so yang ni kat sini dia mention dalam glycolysis dapat dekat mana? So from 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate to okay, glycerate 3 phosphate ataupun 3 phosphoglycerate. Okay, benda yang sama. Okay, benda yang sama. Okay, and then second step ialah di mana uh, phosphoinopyruvate jadi pyruvate. And then kat sini mention juga, so net kita dapat 2 ATP sebab kita guna 2 ATP dekat step yang energy investment phase. Okay, lepas tu dia mention kat mana ATP dapat dekat dalam cap cycle. So daripada conversion of succinic OA to succinic. Okay, next ialah about oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, refer to production of ATP from phosphorylation of ADP where this is coupled with the transfer of electron in electron transport Okay, okay and then they mention dekat mana dapat NADH dengan FADH2 lepas tu NADH dapat berapa which is 10 okay and then NADH akan produce 3 ATP okay lepas tu uh, they mention pula NADH yang 10 tu dapat daripada mana lepas tu production of 30 ATP via oxidative phosphorylation from NADH okay and then FADH2 pula one molecule of glucose Okay, awak akan dapat 2 ATP. Okay, so therefore because you got 2 FADH2, so you got 4 ATP. And last sekali, you total up all the ATP produced. So you got glycolysis and uh, from such level phosphorylation, you got 4 ATP. And then for oxidative phosphorylation, you got 34 ATP. You total up, you dapat 38 ATP. Okay, so macam tu je. Tak payah cerita satu-satu-satu step. Okay, cerita je kat mana ATP terhasil. Okay, so I learn seterusnya. Okay, next. Explain an aerobic respiration in yeast. Okay, so they mention yeast kat sini. Terus dengan kepala awak. Oh, alcohol fermentation. Okay, so kat sini intro dia dia cerita apa? Intro dia dia cerita dulu apa itu anaerobic respiration ataupun fermentation the so incomplete breakdown or oxidation of glucose to produce ATP in the absence of oxygen. Okay, so in yeast, okay, what types of fermentation berlaku iaitu alcoholic fermentation. Okay, sebab apa? Production of ethanol as the final product. Okay, lepas tu baru mention macam mana alcoholic fermentation tu berlaku. Okay, so in the absence of oxygen, glucose will be break down into two molecules of pyruvate. Okay, so here is about glyco. We see, so awak mention dululah. Dia undergo glycolysis dulu sebab dalam glycolysis tu dapat dua ATP kan. Okay, this will produce two molecules of ATP via such a level phosphorylation. Okay, at the same time, lepas tu, okay, uh, masa dalam glycolysis tu, awak hasilkan NADH juga. Kenapa kena mention benda ni? Sebab NADH diperlukan dalam next step. Okay, whereby the next pyruvate produce will then undergo decarboxylation. Okay, removing carbon dioxide, forming acetaldehyde and then acetaldehyde will then be reduced by NADH to form ethanol. Okay, so product, final product awak dapat CO2 dengan ethanol lah. Okay, so itu je untuk anaerobic respiration. Usually kalau awak ingat dia punya diagram, sepatutnya senang untuk awak buat ayat daripada diagram tu lah. Okay, so kita tengok. So diagram apa yang kita ingat? So, glucose undergo uh, forming sorry forming uh, pyruvate okay kat sini dapat 2 
AGP jadi 2 ATP and kita dapat juga 2 NA B plus jadi 2 NA B H okay, so ni 2 lah okay, and then undergo decarboxylation okay, jadi etanol ataupun acetaldehyde boleh je ok lepas tu etanol undergo reduction forming etanol ok so reduce by N A H. Okay, benda tu je. So, awak tahu diagram ni sepatutnya boleh explain. Okay, glucose undergo glycolysis forming 2 ATP by substrate level phosphation and also 2 NADH is produced by oxidation process and then the 2 pyruvate undergo decarboxylation forming ethanol or acetaldehyde and CO2 is released and then lastly ethanol or acetaldehyde undergo reduction okay, ataupun reduced by NADH forming Etanol. Okay, that is the full process. Okay, okay. So I think that's it for chapter uh, five bio booster question. Okay, if you have any other questions, you may ask your lecturer, or you can ask me if you want. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Okay, thank you.